CNN's Wolf Blitzer made headlines and shocked the world, including me, when he started going hard in the paint against Nancy Pelosi, asking her why she was blocking the Republican stimulus bill that would have given Americans a second round of stimulus checks, refusing to even negotiate on this bill and why she was so dead set on only getting her version through. It was refreshing to see CNN finally going after a Democrat the way they do go against Donald Trump 23 and a half hours a day. And at first I thought, well, it's just a PR stunt. They're just trying to feign objectivity as they do by saying, look, we were harsh on a Democrat too. But I don't think that's in the entire story. See, I like to think that every villain has their limits. A line they won't cross for one reason or another. I like to try to see the best in people, the brightest side of things. You could say I'm a bit of an optimist in that way. But you see, I started thinking about the real reason why they would suddenly go after Pelosi, and it really, it really, it kind of hit me. You see, for one thing, Nancy Pelosi is not very well liked even by Democrats across the country. You're kind of average, everyday, run-of-the-mill Democrat who tunes in and watches CNN, not because they have Trump derangement syndrome or they're some kind of communist, but because they think that it's still objective and fair news. So, for one thing, Pelosi was a bit of an easy target, but again, I don't think this was just CNN trying to feign objectivity. No, I think there's a different reason. You see... Excuse me. You see, while um, while CNN may tend to run interference for Democrats and try to explain away very unpopular things they do, I think CNN realized this was a line they just couldn't cross. There's no getting out of this one, so to speak. But I think there was. I think that was only part of the reason. You see. Our debt, our national debt, is huge. But maybe not for the reasons you think. Our, our, our nation's debt to China and other countries makes up but a small fraction of the debt. So where does it come from? Well, long story short, and I'll give you the very short version here. Bankers, following World War II, in which conscription was enforced, but volunteer sign-ups for the military were denied. The Great Depression hits. America goes to war, and bankers realize they can capitalize on this in a way they had never realized before, using what is effectively an IRL infinite money glitch. You see, the United States started selling these bonds during and after World War II. And there's an interest on the bond. You're basically loaning the government money. Now, banks tend to work pretty simply without government interference. Person A puts $100 in the bank. The bank uses that $100, invests it, whatever they grow it. One of the ways they do this is through loans. Banks give out loans with interest. So the bank will take $100 from person A, loan that $100 to person B at a 5% interest, just for the sake of example. Person B comes back with $105. Okay. Person A comes back to find that their $100 has turned into $102. The bank has given person A $2.00 in interest as a way of thanking them for the hundred dollars of capital that they used to make the loan that they gave to person B and the bank pockets three dollars of profit. Again, this is just a purely hypothetical example. I know interest isn't this simple IRL, but you know, it is what it is. But when the government gets involved, that's where things get wacky. See, bankers realized they could use the government as person A. 
borrowing money from the government at interest. The government was willing to give these banks loans because they didn't want the banks to fail because the banks were a huge part of normal life. But you see, the banks realized they could also use the government as person B because the government just continues to sell these bonds. So long story short, the bank borrows money from the government at a 5% interest and then turns around and loans that same money back to the government at 10% interest. So the bank is just siphoning money off the government by doing absolutely nothing. They borrow money from the government at a 5% interest, loan it back to the government at a 10% interest, use the profits to pay off their, their own interest from the loan they got from the government, and it's an IRL money glitch. What does the government do in order to pay back the interest they now owe the bank in difference? Well, they print more money. They, they slap that on button on the money printer. That's how you get inflation. That's how you get rising national debt. Because the bank can't just hyperinflate and go full Venezuela, gas, 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 step on the gas and hyperinflate to the point where, you know, you, you need a, a U-Haul truck full of the nation's highest denomination currency to, to, to buy a, a loaf of bread. So they go into debt, right? That's where the debt keeps climbing. Now... The establishment, you know, your, your, your deep state, secret, shadow government overlords, whatever. It's, it's, it's just greedy people. It's just a whole bunch of people who are all greedy, got together, and realized they can make big money and screw the rest of us over at the same time. It's not this grand conspiracy just to screw people over just for the sake of it. No, no, no. They just want things, and they've figured out a, a GG easy pro-hacks way to get it. So, they realized they can placate the American people and keep them happy with the age-old, tried-and-true, fail-safe, foolproof plan of bread and circuses. Well, then the Kung Flu hit, and the circuses went away for a while. And when the circuses finally came back, they were so inundated with identity politics and BLM shenanigans that the American people said, we don't even want this anymore for the most part, okay? The MLB, the NBA, the NFL, they're not exactly in danger of going bankrupt right now. But after a pandemic that shut down sports for months on end and people were missing their circuses for months, when they finally came back, people said, nah, I'm not even gonna deal with it. Nope, you keep this, you keep all this BS to yourself. I'm just... I'm just going to go back to, to the way it was, because people realized for the first time that they could really live without the circuses. The, the pandemic kind of backfired on the whole circus half of the, of the machine. Once the circuses came back with all their identity politics, people realized, well, I survived for months without this. I'll just keep surviving without it until they, until they change their ways. People finally learned how to actually boycott something. Again, maybe these major sports corporations aren't in danger of just dying out right now as we speak, but it's definitely hitting their bottom line. Okay, don't get me wrong. So, and, and more importantly, people are waking up to just how little they actually need the circuses, and they're starting to focus more on issues that actually matter, which is what the establishment, that's what the machine does not want. So, for the establishment to continue their power and continue their, their stronghold, they have to go all in on the bread half of the equation. And that's why the stimulus checks came out, and that's why they're talking about a second round, stimulus part two. But there's one thing they didn't account for, rogue agents. You see, establishment Republicans, establishment Democrats, and populist Republicans and Democrats, people like Trump who are going against the establishment, they're pretty much almost all on board with getting this second round of stimulus out, right? Some people are doing it for moral reasons because they just genuinely don't want the American people to, to suffer. But the establishment is also doing it because, again, they want to keep the machine rolling. And since the circuses have failed them, they need to go all in on the bread half. At least keep the machine running at half capacity at minimum, right? But a lot of agents of the establishment 
have contracted such a severe case of TDS, such a strong desire not to allow Trump and the Republicans to win on anything, that they've effectively gone rogue. They've bucked the establishment plan. The es Nancy Pelosi is keeping the bread out of the, out of the hands of the American people. The establishment, again, in order to keep their power, because the circuses have failed them, they need to go all in on the bread side of the equation. The machine used to run on bread and circuses, now it has to run on nothing but bread, and Nancy Pelosi is trying to keep that bread away from the people. She's gone rogue. And that's why the establishment is starting to cut her off. That's why the establishment is starting to, to, to work against the same people they've protected for so long because they're going rogue. They're bucking the establishment off. They're breaking away from the plan. And that's why CNN was given the green light to go so hard against Nancy Pelosi and ask her these tough questions like, why are you refusing to negotiate on the stimulus bill? American people need this. Yeah, okay, PR is a little part of it. CNN does want to appear as objective as they can which is not much, but I think CNN was given the green light to go so hard against Nancy Pelosi because the establishment is going all in on the bread and Pelosi, through her TDS, has broken away from the plan and is keeping the bread away from the people. And then if, they, if, she, if she does that, if, they, if she and her other rogue agents succeed in keeping the bread away from the people, they, the establishment has nothing. The machine completely falls apart. It runs out of fuel and just breaks down on the side of the highway. They have nothing left. They need to go all in on the bread. Nancy Pelosi is blocking the bread. You see what I'm saying? I would not be surprised to see Nancy Pelosi and all of her TDS cronies voted out of office. I wouldn't be surprised to see some kind of dirt on them suddenly come out. And their, and their political careers are over entirely. Because again, as far as the establishment, secret rogue government, you know, whatever you want to call it. If you want to blame it on some group or whatever, if you want to go full like neo-Nazi, blame it on the Jews. If you want to say it's the deep state and it's the Q operation, whatever it is, there is some kind of establishment. Whether it's a purposeful conspiracy theory or just a bunch of greedy people getting together and helping each other be greedy. One way or another, there is an establishment in Washington. And, 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 and by the way, for the record, I'm not on board with any of the stuff I mentioned. The, the full-on conspiracy theory, the, the, the blaming the Jews. I'm not, I'm not all about any of that. But... Regardless of what you think it is, there is some kind of establishment in Washington. And they, I, I think in their eyes, Nancy Pelosi and her agents have effectively gone rogue. They've gone rogue. They've broken away from the plan. And I would not be surprised to see Nancy Pelosi and her cronies just, just kicked right out. Because at this point, everyone wants her gone. At this point, the establishment and anti-establishment people both want Nancy Pelosi gone. So I cannot see Nancy Pelosi's political career surviving for very long, given, given the circumstances. Well, anyway, uh, this is North Sea Hero, signing out.